Hey, hey, welcome to another social video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about VAR filter based on loading arrays and why they are actually really cool. For a while, there's been a lot of parallelizers, but oh my good god, they all don't work. <laughs> They're all broken or have an edge case that breaks them or something along those lines. And I've just had enough. <laughs> These are quite cool um, unloading arrays actually. Designed to be used for more basic main storages that don't want a huge massive set based on loading array or whatever. But I'm going to talk a little bit about how they work before I show you. Because if you're going to use one of these, you will want to know how it works. So, let me show you. So, you can see the problem immediately. We are unloading here two boxes of lime concrete and our filters just can't keep up. That's because we are unloading two times faster than we can actually filter. Now, of course, you could just have two times hopper speed filters, but if all of these were to be unloading concrete, you'd need a four times hopper speed filter, and this just isn't good. This is usually combated with a set like this, so you'll keep track of what your uh, unloading at any time and make sure that you're only unloading a single item type Now this is not made by me. I will put the person's name on screen But essentially um, what it does Is if I put a box in well first let me turn on the clock and If I put say this red concrete box What you'll notice is Any second now there we go it now has lost an item, but it came out on the accepted side. And what you'll notice is in our set here, we have a red concrete. So if another box of red concrete was to be input into your unloading array, the set will recognize this and it will deny the box because it's already being unloaded. If I was to put these lot in and then say that one as well, you'll see that this works, I think at 32 game ticks, so. But we can see we have our accepted boxes here, our still denied red box, and our set now has all of those items. Now to remove something from the set, it's really quite easy. You come around here to your input for items and you would input one of the item that you're unloading. So if it was red concrete, for example, you just throw one and you get your two red concrete out. You get two because of the one you just put in and the one that was taken out from the set. Obviously, you'd only send that item when that's finished unloading, but there are better ways. Well, better in my opinion. Instead of having a set like that, you can instead set filters on what you're unloading. So as you can see here, we have lime concrete, red concrete, lime concrete again, and yellow concrete. So if I was to start all of these, what you'll notice is we are still only unloading lime concrete at one times hopper speed. And that's because this filter here is picking up all of the ones from over here into that filter and this one dodges it as you can see here. So that is how we get around the one times hopper speed limit. And how do you set these filters you may ask? Well it's really easy to understand. We have a yellow concrete filter where we're unloading yellow concrete. We have a lime concrete filter where we're unloading lime and as you can see if I come over to our full array over here the the filter is just literally under the box go straight into the filter and we take the output of the filter loop it back round into these droppers and send it on its way so this is the basic unloading array uh, completely fully hopper locked, except for this hopper here, which is the input hopper, which I never lock. I don't see a good reason why. 
I just send that through a general storage lock. As you can see here, it's globally clocked too, which is really nice. And any second now, you'll see our box is unloading. And you'll see that that was a buffered item. You can see that they stack to five, which you can do better than five if you have a bit more stacking over here. But the main idea of this is just to show the concept that this is working. We are now all unloading these items with relative ease and at one times hopper speed. This entire array could be full of a single item type and it will still unload at one times hopper speed. You have your empty boxes out here and non-stackables would also be unloaded but not at one times hopper speed. They would be unloaded at however many slices you have and this is regardless of what you try and do, because this is essentially a splitter, but not in a way. So if you try, like I've done here, to separate non-stackables out, you end up with a few edge cases. The first one being, because this unloader isn't actually one times hopper speed, in, because there's a buffer here for when the filters are getting overloaded by other uh, the same item type the non-stackables can actually uh, end up not sorting non-stackables and instead sorting when the buffer fills and sending them out the output so i really wouldn't recommend this uh, i would just instead have non-stackable separators of the output of this which will just improve everything it makes the whole array smaller it's just better in my opinion this, on the other hand, is really, really cool and has a lot of practical uses. It's using fit unloaders on top of these var variable loaders down here. Uh, sorry, sorters down here. So why this is useful is you could have a whitelister to send items to a specific place, unload them at the maximum possible speed you can with your array, um, and then send them on their merry array. Why this could be good is let's take a compactor array for example. And normally you'd unload them and send those items all the way around to your compactor and well, you'd send every single item through the compactor and obviously filters would detect if there's actually compactable items being sent. Or you can have a whitelister to send the boxes with a compactable item in their first slot to one of these arrays and have the output go to your compactors and then just send the output of this, the boxes, back to that whitelister and if the whitelister denies any boxes, send it to your normal unloading array. This can actually improve your sorting speeds quite a lot. Well, not really your sorting speeds, but if you think about it, you're unloading more boxes at one time, so you can theoretically sort more items in less time. Obviously that would only come in specific cases, but that's pretty much everything I have to show for these. There is a world download for all three of these, this stuff won't be in it, that was just for demonstrations. Um, and I do want to mention that I am working on a few of these, well, mainly this, I'm working on a compactor array that actually uses this on top of variable compactors, so that should be really cool to see. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling, and I'll let you go. Bye-bye.